Uh, my name's Tom Morrissey. I'm the CEO and founder of HBG. I founded the company roughly six years ago after a 25-year career with Cigna in, in uh, healthcare sales here in New York, working with uh, many of you uh, in that career, and uh, really the, the motivation in forming the company was that I work mostly in the larger sales segment or the larger employer segment, I should say, not necessarily in national accounts, but in larger middle market accounts. And I, I had a lot of exposure to the national account world and teaming with national account partners to work on that business. And it was always very frustrating to me to see the large national accounts had all the tools in the sandbox, if you will, that were available at the time. And these tools evolve, and we're going to be talking about a lot of those today. But it was always frustrating to me that national accounts had access to, and not just with Cigna, but with all the major carriers, they had access to these great solutions that never were available down market. So what we decided to do with HBG is to become a company that would take Fortune 100 solutions, aggregate a population, and be able to deliver those solutions. You'll, you'll, some of the folks you'll hear from today and many of our partners when we first started this business with zero lives under management, the, the conversations were difficult. You know, we don't talk to you unless you're 5,000 employees, sometimes even greater than that. So we finally got into the place where after uh, three diff very difficult years, the last two and two and a half years have been quite good for us, but we've got it to the point where we're scaled up. We've got 25,000 employees plus, really th close to 30,000 employees, 60,000 members under management, roughly 300 accounts under management, um, and really, I'm proud to be able to say that we have many, we have many brokers that have dozens of accounts with us, but we also have quite a few named brokers, you know, some of whom are in the room, where we have one and two and we're growing. So we're doing a lot of business. We, there's not a broker you can name of the large brokers that we don't have a case or two with. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to drive to write more business with those folks. I personally have always enjoyed working with the entrepreneurial, more boutique brokered shops, so we have a, an emphasis in working in that area. This is, uh, we're kicking off a new branding that we did. Uh, I, we used to have a square logo, kind of boring. We went out to a company called Born and Raised, thanks to Leah, who's here somewhere. Thank you, Leah, who developed our uh, new branding strategy, uh, HBG, the measure of good health. So for agenda for this morning, I'm just, I, I've given you the Healthy Business Group update. I'll talk, talk a little bit about Trendbender. We'll, I'll introduce our, two of our best practice partners who will co-present uh, Naturally Slim, which is a metabolic syndrome reversal tool that we've been using for over four years now, and Compass, which is a phenomenal concierge and price transparency tool. I'll then introduce Kurt Rosine from Second MD. Very exciting uh, new contract. We actually inked it about five minutes ago. It's been going back and forth between the attorneys, so uh, we're happy to have Kirk here. This is uh, an, uh, just another example of a new partner that we brought on that uh, does work mostly in the Fortune 100 and Fortune 500 space, but our clients will have access to Second MD services. You'll learn all about what those are just because we've got now the scale that we can sign these contracts because we can promise them the number of employees that they need to really get the, uh, the program running. Then I'm very pleased to be able to have uh, Jennifer Joy here, the Chief Operating Officer of the Cigna Select segment, uh, to talk about Trendbender from Cigna's perspective, you know, how we evolved with them, where we are today and where we're going. And with time left over, we'll have a little panel discussion and a Q&A. So we were healthybusinessgroup.net, and it's kind of a funny story, but as we were going through this uh, rebranding campaign, you know, hbg.com was always taken. It had been for years. It's owned by some company in China. We tried to buy it. They wanted a lot of money for it, so we said no. So we came up with hbgnow.com from healthybusinessgroup.net. So this is our new website. We also, thanks to Dan McCaffrey's sarcastic email to me one day recently, you know, Dan just started to run, what, the whole northeast of Alliant, and uh, 
were good friends from back in the old days, and he wrote to me, said, what's your email address? So I wrote to him, it was t.morris at healthybusinessgroup.net. And I think he counted the letters and he said, that is the most ridiculously long email address I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> so our new e email address is our first initial last name at hbgnow.com. And if I did it right last night in my sleep, it's, we cut down 13 letters from the address. <laughs> okay. So just a, a quick snapshot. We'd love to have your feedback. If you would go on our site, we're, we're beginning to promote the site. It's up and live. Uh, it looks a hell of a lot different from the site we built five years ago. Uh, but this is just a copy of the home page, getting into some of the, uh, the solution material inside. Just some screenshots I wanted to share with you. There's a broker uh, portal. There's an employer portal. What's new? We just posted recently, more companies are investing in mindfulness programs. I'll talk about that in a moment. Telemedicine is, of course, hot, a very hot topic today. So that's, that's where we are with the branding. I also want to announce that we've formed a, we've, you know, we've always had, uh, as our business has evolved, we've always had a team of people led by me who I spend most of my days looking at what's out there, what's, what's coming next. Uh, we, we developed a 10-member team, five are within HBG, five from outside HBG, that are our new uh, HBG Health Innovation Team, other, otherwise known as HIT. Uh, and you know, we, we will continue to evolve and bring more and more partners on our platform as we, as we uh, go forward. We're also a, a member of the National Business Group on Health. We've been a member since day one. It was a very big investment at the time. It still is. It's quite uh, a premium to be a member of the National Business Group on Health. I'm sure you're all familiar with who they are. There's a lot of local business groups, uh, the Northeast Business Group on Health, and so on. But we decided to pay most of our attention to the National Business Group on Health. I'm certain we're the smallest employer in the group, but they have 80 of the Fortune 100. I want to say they have probably 75% of the Fortune 500. And just a, f a phenomenal organization in terms of best practice uh, sharing. So their member companies are very active in the organization. They do uh, best employers to work for for healthy lifestyles every year. Uh, and they do a lot of uh, survey work. So in essence, what we really do, and it's quite simple, we're, we're, we study National Business Group on Health, we learn what the large employers are doing, and obviously what the large employers are doing, the smaller employers should be doing, but it's not accessible to them. So we just follow this, uh, and like I said, it's quite simple. We, we find out what they're doing and try to figure out if there's a program out there that fits one of the genres, telehealth, price transparency. This is uh, the two, th this was just produced in August. This, I'll go back. This large employer study, 133 employers, I want to say well over a million people employed by that subset of employers, uh, respond to a, a really long survey. So I'm just showing you a couple cuts of the survey results. You'll see that, you know, most of your employers, I'm sure, are offering telehealth by now but 70% in 16, 20% more going for it of these larger employers are going to be offering telehealth uh, in, in 17, price transparency tools, of course, centers of excellence and the promoting of ACOs. So this is another one that I thought was relevant. As you can see, so there, the employers are asked, what, what do you consider the top three most effective steps you will take to help to control healthcare cost increases? You know, everyone's talking about pharmacy management. Specialty pharma is, you know, the, the absolute biggest contributor to cost increases today. I read recently that if it wasn't for the specialty pharma problem, uh, healthcare inflation would be flat, and that's, that's the biggest driver. But what I like to see in this slide is that the second one, uh, the second most effective tactic is to initiatives to improve employee well-being, and that's what really we're all about. So we partner with you as brokers and consultants to be experts in this field. You know, I know as uh, I speak to many of you, you're very busy. Your, your, your priorities tend to be uh, the Affordable Care Act, dealing with compliance, things like that, you know, bidding out, making sure your clients got the right price with the right carrier and so on. 
but we would like to, and it, we've, we're partnered now with many of you, but we'd like to continue to grow those partnerships. So this is, this is the number one area we focus on. So getting into Trendbender. Now, Trendbender, exclusively underwritten by Cigna, the Cigna Select segment, 50 to 250 employees. Uh, it's exclusively underwritten by Cigna and powered by HPG. So this is the platform we put together. These are our present day tools. As you'll see, Second MD is just coming on board for 1.1. Uh, I'm going to give you a little briefing on the, the tool, the platform partners that are not here to speak. And I'll, I'll let Wally, Eric, and Kirk talk about uh, the program, the, the platform uh, partners that uh, you know, are here to talk about what they do. So when it comes to stress, we've done hundreds, I, I don't know the exact number, but hundreds, if not you know, two, three, four hundred total population health management surveys, whether it includes a biometric screening, teamed with a health assessment, you know, put together. And stress is the number one, two, or three most prevalent problem in every single one, bar maybe three, four percent of our book of business. It's the, it's the most, uh, one, two, or three most prevalent problem at a company. So four years ago, we teamed with eMindful. eMindful is a program. It's delivered online. It's a 12-week program. I shouldn't say that because they're now becoming, they've got many more program offerings. It's not just pigeonholed to a 12-week program. But where we started was it was a 12-week program. You would sign up for a certain time once a week. You're in a classroom with the same people but online. Uh, with a mindfulness coach teaching you through what mindfulness is, how to practice mindfulness, and uh, try to eliminate stress in your life. We're, we're uh, learning more and more about what their newest offerings are. They're going to have shorter courses. They're going to have an app that will come out, uh, I think, in the fall of this year. Yeah, right. Fall, or if not, it will probably go to first quarter like they all do, but um, except for Eric's, which is definitely not going to take too long. But great organization, and Trendbender clients have, all of our Trendbender clients have access to eMindful. Mobile Health Consumer, this is an app that we use. Uh, they have really proven themselves in the West. They've got, uh, their, their pilot account was Western Digital. This is a program that it includes a health risk assessment. It, we, we load your ID cards, you know, on, this, on a Cigna Trendbender case. We automatically upload ID cards to the app. Uh, we have automatic buttons to get you into our other partners like MD Live for telehealth, Compass, and so on. Great program. Now, we just had a breakthrough with Cigna on the West Coast that's coming east soon. We have two clients out on the West Coast where Cigna recently vetted out Mobile Health Consumer. They, they got together and uh, went through you know, privacy and, and just they, they vetted them out where Cigna feels comfortable now that they can give feeds of data to, mobile, to our mobile health consumer members directly through this tool. A good example would be the Cigna Healthcare's Your Health First program. It's their healthcare coaching disease management program. It's a ho one holistic program called Your Health First. All of our uh, level funded and, and fully insured accounts now get consultative analytics from Cigna and if you go through these reports, and this is not just true of Cigna, this is true of every carrier on the planet. Uh, they all have great disease management programs. The challenge is getting people to participate. You're going to hear a lot from Eric and Wally and Kirk on healthcare activation. How do you get people engaged? Well, if, getting back to the, CAT, the consultative analytics report, the CAPS reports, we'll see when we study these things that you know, Cigna on a, let's say a 300 life group, they'll identify, or let's say a 300 member group, 150 employee group. That group probably has 75 to 100 people who, based on claims data, pharmacy data, health risk assessment results, whatever the case may be, they have analyzed that data and they know these folks could really benefit from being actively involved in your health first. Problem is, as we all know, the tactic that Cigna uses, and again, I don't want to, this isn't bashing Cigna, it's the tactic that all the carriers use. They're calling you at dinner time on an 800 number and no one's picking up the phone. 
So they have a great way of identifying these 75 or 100 people that could really benefit from it. But it always says in these CAP reports underneath it, it's that you know, they've called all the people. It says how many times they've called them. And their response rate's very low. You know, five to six percent would be a good number. What we've proved, what's proven by Mobile Health Consumer and now by us with these two clients I mentioned on the West Coast, is we have now a feed that takes those people that have been identified. We message through Mobile Health Consumer, and in many cases, the employer is suggesting that if you're identified through Mobile Health Consumer that you are uh, eligible and would benefit from your health first, you need to participate in the program. If, when we get that type of activity, we are, at the, ver the very least, bringing up the participation in your health first by 5x. So we've guaranteed Cigna 5x increase in their existing participation just through this tool. Proven by Western Digital, which is the, uh, not a case of, Cig of HBGs or Cigna's, this is a 15,000 life employer on the West Coast, tech company, who had the same problem. They were with Anthem. And there's a slide, I don't have it with me today, but there's a slide they use to demonstrate the effectiveness of the program. I want to say, making the number up a little bit, but of the 15,000 lives, Anthem only had 87 people enrolled in their coaching and disease management programs. Upon introducing this, six months into introducing it, they now have over 1,700. So this is a great way to get employees activated. It's not for everybody. You know, we're finding that millennials like these apps more than, say, baby boomers, like me. But, you know, I like apps too. But it, they, you know, it, it fits a certain crowd, really. And we're working with Cigna where there'll be a Cigna button within MHC that'll automatically take you to the Cigna app as well. So MD Live, this is an, a, this is an example actually of, uh, and Jen will share a little bit more about how Cigna views what we do. But within the, our client base, we were uh, being asked by many employers about telehealth that uh, heretofore Cigna had not been able to offer in the select segment uh, due to a lot of reasons. It wasn't prioritized. Uh, you know, the filings that they had to go through state by state just didn't get prioritized, so they didn't have it. So a lot of, we went out to M MD Live ourselves, contracted with them. We've got a, in excess of 25,000 employees, 50,000 members on MD Live. But what we did with, that's different than anyone else we know is we contracted for a zero dollar consultation fee. So our, our participation rates, or I should say our engagement rates in MD Live are twice MD Live's norm. Because MD Live, it's usually your PCP copay. The Cigna plan is a $38 copay. So that people, if it's close to your PCP copay, the people may be, individual members may be more apt to look at or go to their urgent care facility or uh, their PCP, God forbid, the emergency room. But we're finding that just by having a $0 consultation fee, People are really, they're trying it out. We know people are just trying it out to try it out. They're making a phone call maybe when they don't even need it, which is okay. And the way it works is, for those of you who have Cigna accounts with us, is there is no claim. So Cigna pays us a fee to manage Trendbender. From that, we pay part of that fee to MD Live on a capitated contract. We're totally transparent about what these numbers are. So. HPG pays MD Live $2 per employee per month to run this program. The good news is for every time we can get somebody to use this and avoid PCP urgent care or especially emergency care, we're eliminating a claim because it's fully capitated with us so there is no claim with Cigna. The only claim would be a script. And many of these calls uh, obviously go to scripts for antibiotics and things like that. I should mention that for HSAs we have a $25 consultation fee available for uh, advisors like yourselves who may feel uncomfortable with zero dollar on HSA plans. Uh, just a little bit about what's next. We are, con like I said, with the, with the HIT team, the health innovation team, we are constantly exploring uh, next partners to put on the platform. This is just an example. Uh, we're in talks with Hello Heart, who ha I have one here. It's an awesome uh, Bluetooth-based, app-based blood pressure monitor for people with blood pressure control issues. Uh, working with, let's, as an example, the Your Health First Cigna Health Coach 
on you know, maybe developing an exercise program, monitoring blood pressure better, you may be able to get uh, pharmacy reductions with the uh, loss of control or medication being needed. Uh, we're finding that while I said stress is the number one issue, eMindful is a great program, but I think we have to broaden our uh, offerings in each of these spaces. So millennials especially, they're famous for, I don't think we have any millennials here, do we? Well, maybe one, two. You guys are famous for this. No. They, in, in all the research, you know, we do have to uh, evolve programs to reach each of the three generations. There are completely separate needs. But the millennials, sorry to say this, guys, but famous for uh, having stress around financials. Financial stress is the number one stressor for the millennial. A lot of them don't know how to create a budget. So this organization, FinFit, we're not done with this yet. We're actually talking to another one called Financial Fusion. We are going to probably end up partnering with both because they offer two different dis distinct services. Um, but we're expecting this will be a hit with our millennial population to help uh, on the financial side of the stress equation. Sleepio, in very initial discussions with them, they were recommended by the National Business Group on Health as well. Many large employers have piloted them. It's an app-based program that uh, with your iPhone or any device can help you get into better sleep patterns. It teaches you if you have sleep issues, uh, you know, how to, how to uh, control that a little better. And with that obviously comes higher productivity and things like that. Off the scale, Peter is where? We have Peter as a guest from a new, new just a brand new introduction last week. Um, I'm going to give him a few minutes during the panel discussion to explain what they're doing. But similar to what uh, Wally is doing with Naturally Slim, off the scale is intended to reduce chronic disease by getting people to lose weight and, and such. Just getting back to National Business Group on Health, I've said earlier we learn a lot. We, it's not about just tools and solutions, but it's also about strategies that larger employers are putting into place. And quite frankly, candidly, I don't think the tri-state broker consulting population is doing enough with allowable premium differential strategies. You're aware that uh, for the engaged population, an employer can uh, reduce the cost, or if you want to say the disengaged population, increase the cost for their employee contributions by 30% of the individual health care cost at the employee level. It's a big number. And it really, and the experiments that we've done uh, has been uh, very eye-opening. We really want to push this through and kind of uh, add to your consultancy by sharing our results and try to get uh, premium differential. We really think this idea of what we're calling a pledge, you know, alliance, you might take us up on this and call it something else, but really get out there. I think you can help differentiate yourselves and separate yourselves from the pack by talking about this seldom discussed opportunity. This is an actual result. We had a, a company performance team out in California, 650 lives. Uh, started back, this slide suggests, I think this is PT, yeah. yeah. So 1114, they, they put out Compass. And Craig Kaplan, the CEO of the organization, very uh, friendly, professionally, and uh, personally with the broker on the account. We put in the tools. Craig wrote a great leadership memo. We all know leadership needs to be involved, but a memo can only take you so far. So we sat down with Craig. This is a March 1 effective date. We sat down with him in the fourth quarter uh, of, 15, of 15, yeah, and, no, 14, sorry. And, you know, we're going through results, and, you know, we're paying Compass $5 per employee per month nobody was using the tool. You can see from the results, there were 650 lives, 18 people had used the tool. Poorly communicated once that leadership memo went out. They've got a great HR team, but they just did not get it done. We shared with Craig Kaplan what he could be doing in terms of a pledge. So if, in working with that premium differential, all we did was he, we wrote a strongly worded memo from him to his staff saying, listen, you know, the sustainability of our health plan is in jeopardy. We have, a, they, they did, they, they've had big rate increases over the years. They're, they're a population that certainly needs as much help as they can get. 
what we did is we created this pledge, and this is just an example. There's all sorts of stuff you can do, but we put it online, everybody went, think of the 650 people, maybe nine people did not uh, sign the pledge. It was simply, I'll have my routine physical exam and all my age and gender appropriate screenings. I'll use Compass for all non-emergency services. You know, going further, uh, you know, I'll use Second MD for any, let's say, to begin with, musculoskeletal surgeries. If I, if I have anything in this category of MSK, I promise to use the service. Participate or don't, and I'll flip it back. We, you know, I said it was a March 1. We started seeing immediate results in uh, February because the announcement went out in February. People just started using the service, and the, the results to date are even more substantial. We're really not a wellness company. We're a measures-based health improvement company. We do it based on stats. We know how to engage folks, and I hope you'll take us up on the offer of you know, further pursuing education around what you can be talking to your clients about, about contribution strategies. Uh, hey, so good morning. So I'm Wally Goma, and uh, I am CEO for ACAP Health, and we're out of Dallas, Texas. We are a research and consulting firm that really kind of got in the space um, by accident, really started from some consulting work we were doing with uh, mainly with insurance carriers and with hospital systems. And it was through that work that we decided we needed to, to you know, in also include as part of our organization work that we could bring forward to the employee benefits industry to bring measurable results. And I'm excited today to share with you a couple of things that we've been doing with uh, the Healthy Business Group now for, for several years. One is a program called Naturally Slim. It's our metabolic syndrome solution. And the other uh, that Dr. Bricker will talk about is a program called Compass, which hopefully you know a lot about uh, the Compass program. Before we jump into it, though, I asked Tom if I could just take five minutes to do a little bit of table setting and kind of talk about where we are as an industry. And I thought this quote from David Suzuki uh, that really is an environmentalist uh, spoke perfectly to the challenges we have as a country right now. Um, and it's really the folks in this room to really sort through that if we even want to have a chance to be able to, to have a healthcare system for the next generation. So um, if I asked you to take your watches out and, and count off how many seconds a million seconds would take, how many days would a million seconds take to, to click off of our watch? So I'll go ahead and say it's 11.6 days. If I said a billion seconds, how long would that take? So we'll say 31.7 years, and a trillion seconds is 31,689 years, and we have that times 19 as our federal deficit. And it's really what you know, we've all been in the middle of with ACA that we think is the big thing that employers just haven't quite realized about the Affordable Care Act that is the main driver of spend. So if you kind of look at where we were pre-ACA, we had hospital system costs on Medicare really trending upwards. ACA came in there and it made a legislative change to how we pay for health hospital system care that actually created a period of deflation. And what we, we had to do that because the Medicare trust fund was essentially scheduled to be insolvent in 2017. What we've really done is we've just kicked that can down the road. Our challenges with Medicare and, and really Medicare and Social Security is what represents the lion's share of the deficit are really the main driver of what's driving healthcare inflation for employers. So you, you kind of look at this further. We had 57 million Americans that were in the that are in the Medicare program today. That number is growing to 85 million as the baby boomers move into Medicare, and we're going to have far fewer beneficiaries pouring into the Medicare trust fund. The reason why we keep talking about Medicare every time we get in front of consultants or employers. It's the challenges with Medicare that is driving healthcare inflation on the private side. So you think about the federal government has completely given providers a haircut on Medicare, yet even though Medicare gave providers a haircut, hospital profits are at record rates right now. So where's the money coming from? So what's really happened is you see where Medicare was going on the hospital trust fund, ACA came in there and legislatively capped it. And what you've got is that the government's taking p the money out of the hospital's pockets, and then the hospitals are taking it out of the, out of the employer's pockets. And 
let me just say this and without any you know disparaging to the insurance carriers the medical loss ratio has removed the incentive for insurance carriers to be able to control trend because now with an 85 percent loss ratio you know the higher health care costs go the more that insurance premiums can get also we're in a we're in a world of hurt right now and and we're not going to just finance our way through it you know what what we really look at right now is that this hidden medicare tax that's affecting employers it is it is at crisis levels right now um, on a national level we're at 163 percent of medicare um, in this region i pulled the data does anybody know where we are in this region of the country just take the northeast 221 percent so that's the delta two patients laying in the hospital have the exact same services on the private insurance side we're paying 2.2 times more than the medicare reimburses and that's just that's a that's a cost shift that's happening that is is dramatically influencing you know healthcare inflation um, the other big challenge we have so you think about what's happening on the unit cost side is we now have one out of every two americans not in the future this is today that are either uh, pre-diabetic or living with diabetes today. It's hard to get your head around that. One out of every two of us. Um, we use this escalator as an analogy that if I'm standing on an escalator and I'm just standing still, which direction am I going? I'm going up. And normal, um, it takes somebody who's pre-diabetic is running at about $2,500 per year uh, you know, for a pre-diabetic on a commercial insurance plan. Uh, when they get up to the second floor, depending on what study you're looking at, it's anywhere from $18,000 to $22,000 per year, average cost per type 2 diabetic. And what we really need to do is we need, to, we need a solution um, for our country that can absolutely not just hit the stop button on the escalator, but actually hit the reverse button. Now, when you advise clients uh, for the employers in the room, the insurance carriers, diabetes doesn't usually make the top, you know, the top list of the big three areas of spend. So what are the top medical diagnostic categories? So you got cancer, heart. heart, and? MSK. MSK. So when we look at diabetes, a lot of people wonder why we focus so much on diabetes. Think of that as the gateway condition. What you would see is that th there's this overlap of these three boxes. Diabetes is the gateway condition that is driving all of it, and one out of every two of us are either pre-diabetic or living with diabetes today. And we can change it easily. Like we absolutely can. Um, fixing healthcare, I think, you know, as a, and you know, Tom was saying this, so my background, I was formerly the, uh, I was a financial officer for a large hospital system in the Houston Medical Center. And then I defected to the other side of the, pe the fence and I was president for one of the medical carriers. Um, and when we look at this really difficult algebra equation, it's price times use equals cost. And so what we really want to talk about today is two very simple ways to affect use and, and price or unit cost. And when we do that, what the Healthy Business Group has enjoyed and other organizations is the elimination of healthcare trend without having to do th go through all the deductible cost shifting you know, nonsense that we, that we see happening a lot. Now, um, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about Naturally Slim. I'm going to give you just a, a boring bullet point slide and then just share a few results with you. Um, but this is today the largest program in the country, um, has worked exclusively historically in the employee benefits industry, designed intentionally to reverse prediabetes, metabolic syndrome, and obesity. And kind of what we're known for is that when we work with an organization, we give a 100% performance guarantee on pre and post clinical lab results. If the lab data doesn't go back to normal, not improve, but go back to normal, then we don't bill for the cost of our services. That is a, that's a big, a big part of what we do. Um, we use evidence-based skill building. Um, make no mistake about this, the challenges we've had on our obesity epidemic are not related to what we keep trying to do as an industry. It drives me crazy. We keep thinking it's a matter of education and motivation. If you go back and you look at people who've struggled with their weight, it's not a lack of education. Ask a heavy person the calorie content for a muffin and they'll know it. It's true. And it's not because of lack of motivation. People that have struggled with their weight, they think about losing weight every single day. 
Um, the reason they've not been able to be successful at losing weight is we haven't helped them develop skills around their food. If I want to be a better golfer, you know, it doesn't matter how much you pay me or you educate me, I'm not going to just magically be a better golfer. What do I have to do to be a better golfer? And if I practice something enough, what do I form? I mean, skills and then habits, exactly right. So that's where we've missed it as a country. Um, it really is that simple. And if you can teach individuals the skills that naturally slim people do naturally, because they're not genetically gifted and they don't just have a fast metabolism, how they eat their food is different than the rest of us. All right, so that, that is really at the heart of what is in the curriculum of Naturally Slim, 100% delivered through technology. So if you've got a smartphone, a computer, or a tablet, we're going to reach them. Um, meets the latest federal treatment obesity guidelines. So our chief medical officer and then all these people that have joined our team, you know, over this last decade that we've been, we've been on this mission to, to try to change the world, um, are really the thought leaders in the clinical community. These are the, you know, folks like Dr. Tim Church, who is, you know, a world-renowned researcher and public expert in this space who's helped us to take where we are today and evolve it to the next generation. Now, remember this, the Affordable Care Act requires for all non-grandfathered plans a requirement that obesity counseling must be covered as a preventive care service. So if, you're, if an employer is not making these services available today, they're not providing support on the essential benefit list. So a lot of what we do helps employers to comply you know, with that requirement. Um, I'm going to skip just the interest of time and, and talk about kind of where we are. Um, today we have, um, you know, we're constantly going through research and, and publishing through peer-reviewed studies. Uh, this is one from the Metabolic Syndrome and Related Disorders that was published last year. You know, I'm going to tell you, just like disease management got a black eye several years ago, I think wellness is coming there next, just to being, be very transparent. And we don't like to say what we do is wellness. Because I think depending on where you are culturally as an organization, you know, wellness has had a hard time being able to deliver measurable clinical results and financial results. So we like to say, you know, please don't call what we do a wellness program. Um, it really is a clinical intervention program designed not just to improve clinical lab values, but return them back to normal. If we don't return clinical lab values back to normal, not just improve them, but actually get them back to a normal level, the ability to eliminate healthcare trend becomes almost impossible because we're just producing too much disease. We're producing too much disease. What we do virtually every time that we implement this program is we help reduce the number of people with obesity, prediabetes, or metabolic syndrome. We slash it in half, and we do that every single time. Last year, we implemented this, um, tw we did 1,200 implementations of this program, 1,200 employers. We provide the 100% performance guarantee, and we've never missed on that performance guarantee a single time. So we know how to do it now. We know what we were doing wrong. Um, everybody always asks the question, how do you get people engaged, right? How do you get people just to do it? What is the one thing that 72% of Americans do every year? They do it voluntarily, and nobody's ever asking them to do it around their health. They start what? I'll give you a hint. They start on January 1st and a Monday. They start on January 1st or a Monday, start a diet. And by Tuesday, they're off their diet. Nobody starts on the weekend, right? They don't. And it's true. I mean, this is research. And then you know what? By Tuesday, they're off their diet, and they start next Monday. And that next Monday, that's the Monday I'm going to, this is the year I'm going to, this, this time I'm going to do it. And they look up, and it's 10 or 20 years later, and they haven't done it. I, I lost 146 pounds. Like, I get what it means to struggle. All right? I used to be, in full disclosure, six foot seven, though. I didn't tell you that part. <laughs> um, so, so when we look at graduation rates, we're 82%, not 1% or 2%, but 82% of people that we enroll graduate from the program, what do you think is the biggest motivation for someone that we engage with to be successful? By far, it's the thing that gets people engaged more than anything else. It's they've enrolled in a program, a weekend, they stand on the scale and they're like, no way. 
I never thought losing weight could be this easy because we've had the playbook wrong for a lot of years. We think it's about, you know, eat this, don't eat that, or blood, sweat, and tears in the gym. Look at the Biggest Loser TV show and look at the, 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 the actual alumni from that show. They're not doing well because they didn't learn the skills we thought it was all about accountability. Well, I'm, a, I'm the Chief Medical Officer, co-founder of Compass. And Compass is tools and support for healthcare consumers. Just a quick 30 seconds about my background. Uh, before I went into medicine, uh, I actually used to be a, a hospital finance consultant. So we used to be back in the billing and business office of major medical centers dealing with all the same claims issues that Cigna and the carriers and employers deal with. But I was on the flip opposite side. I was on the dock and the, ho uh, dock and the hospital side. The company I work for is called Stock Camp and Associates. No one's ever heard of them before, but it's actually the biggest name in the business for, uh, for hospital revenue. So if you get a bill from Columbia Cornell here in town, Stock Camp designed that entire billing and collection process. So Cleveland Clinic, uh, I worked on a project uh, with a hospital affiliate with Yale New Haven in, a, uh, uh, in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, so took that claims experience, but wanted to be more clinically oriented. Uh, so went on to medical school, residency, and just saw a lot of confusion and frustration on the part of my patients. And so I just, I knew that, that there was a better way to help them outside of my office. So myself and my uh, fellow consulting uh, colleague, uh, Scott Shane Vogel, uh, started Compass as tools and support for healthcare consumers. And uh, we've grown to over uh, 2,200 clients. You can see some household name here, names here like T-Mobile, Southwest Airlines, um, Chili's and Maggiano's Restaurant. They don't have Dillard's in the Southeast. I call, I call Dillard's the, the Macy's of the South, right? So, and, and then if, I, and if, I'm in, if, I'm, if I'm ever in, they're based in Little Rock, Arkansas. If I'm, if I'm ever in Little Rock, I can't uh, mention the M word. Um, <laughs> But, uh, and then uh, manufacturing clients, if you have a garage door opener, you probably have a Genie garage door opener, which is made by Overhead Door, uh, universities like SMU, Energy Future Holdings, and Atmos Energy, so we have um, utility clients as well. Nebraska Furniture Mart's a Berkshire Hathaway company. We have uh, quite a few, I think six Berkshire Hathaway clients. We just signed up Fruit of the Loom. We just signed up the Seattle Seahawks. So literally from the NFL to underwear, uh, we, uh, we do it all. And uh, we have uh, 135 groups uh, with uh, the Healthy Business Group. And so I'm super excited about, about the partnership uh, with them. So uh, the way that Compass takes shape as, as tools and support for healthcare consumers is uh, what we, uh, a personal healthcare concierge, or what we call a health pro. And that actually is Tara. She actually is a health pro. She actually did go to the University of Wisconsin there. You can see the badger there uh, in the background. And the employees interact with their health pro by phone or by email, or we have an online member portal as well. And one of the basic services that that health pro provides is the in-network price transparency, right? So all of you are probably very well aware of this now, but you know the networks are, are very large and in-network utilization is typically very high, north of 90, 95%. But just because you go in-network, that doesn't mean that the allowed amount is the same everywhere that you go. And so here's an example here in, uh, in uh, New York where at uh, Mount Sinai Beth Israel, the allowed amount is $1,300 for an MRI of the lumbar spine. At NYU, it's 849 And at New York Radiology Partners, which has seven locations in Manhattan, it's 550, uh, 560, uh, 66. So you can see, and, these, and this is after the insurance discount has been applied. So this is the allowed amount. So you can see, you know, people talk about like medical tourism, how you can go like India or Costa Rica for surgery, but you can have like local domestic medical tourism uh, just within uh, Manhattan or North Jersey or Long Island or wherever you are. And so at Compass, we actually have a, a database of over a billion claims. We're actually able to give folks the comparative in-network uh, allowed amounts. And this is true in not only in the tri-state area, it's true across the country, and it's really true with all the networks. So Blue Cross United, Cigna, Aetna, Renton Networks like PHCS Multiplan, regardless of where you are in the country or what network you use, those prices are, are very different. Uh, this is an example here for a, a GI endoscopy. So this would be like an upper endoscopy by a gastroenterologist for like heartburn or a colonoscopy where you can see that, and we'll break down all the different uh, billing components, right? Because if you go in for service, your typical employee is like, well, I'm only gonna get one bill, right? Well, no, of course you're not going to get one bill. You're going to get a whole bunch of bills, right? So you're going to get a facility charge, a physician charge, and then obviously, if you're going to get a, a scope, do you want to be awake or asleep? You want to be asleep, right? And so there's, there's potentially going to be an additional anesthesia fee uh, as well.
Sorry about that. And so at Compass, we actually screen the gastroenterologists, so we determine, okay, well, which ones use outside anesthesiologists and which ones actually perform their own conscious sedation. Now, don't worry. They actually administer the exact same medications that were sent and the fentanyl to put you to sleep, but the gastroenterologist doesn't charge extra for it. So your typical employee, they would go in, they would get their scope, they would wake up, and then 30 days later, they'd get some bill, and they would have no idea where it was coming from or why they, or why they received it. So we, can actually, we actually screen the, the gastroenterologist in advance so we can uh, highlight all the different uh, billing components. And I'll say something that is a little unique to the tri-state area is a fair number of gastroenterologists do the whole in-network doctor, out-of-network facility, bait, and switch. So you ask the doctor, oh, are you in-network? And they're like, oh, yeah, we're totally in-network. You just go over here and use my endoscopy facility. Oh, by the way, that endoscopy facility is not in-network. And so that facility charge, literally, we've literally had $25,000 colonoscopies. Okay, it should only cost like $800 for that facility charge. And so we really work with our members to say, okay, yes, your GI doc is in network, but let's make sure that we find an in-network facility, hospital, endoscopy center, ambulatory surgery center for you to do it. Because not only is it a $25,000 colonoscopy, it goes towards their out-of-network deductible, right? So the, the patient is fighting mad if they learn about this afterwards. So if we can help prevent them from having that happen in the first place, it's a huge win, not only for them, but also for the plan uh, as well. And we wrap that price transparency in these, all these concierge services because it's actually fairly rare for an employee to call us up and say, hey, could you give me the comparative cost of an MRI in the Upper West Side? That's typically not what they do. They say, hey, you know, um, you know how, how do my benefits cover bunions? I don't know, right? Or, you know, what's my deductible on my coinsurance? I don't really know, right? And so, we, you know, we load the plan documents for all of our groups into our system. And we don't just say, okay, well, here's your benefits. You're done. It's like, okay, well... Why are you asking? Oh, well, because I'm looking for a podiatrist or an orthopedist that specializes in foot, or I'm looking for a dermatologist, or I'm looking for an ophthalmologist. So we just find a lot of doctors for people. And it, you know, it's around a lot of basic stuff like, a, like a location and appointment availability. And our health pros actually screen the doctor's offices for a appointment availability. Because if you're looking for a dermatologist and you just call up on their own, what are they going to say? First available appointments in three months. Well, it's like, well, shoot, I don't want to wait three months to see somebody. I'd like to be seen sooner. So we can actually find physicians that meet the uh, appointment availability profile of what you're looking for. Or it could be a, an area of clinical expertise. Maybe you don't want a general neurologist. Maybe you want somebody who specializes in multiple sclerosis because, heaven forbid, you have MS. Well, we can identify those physicians that actually subspecialize uh, in what you're looking for. And then, okay, let's give you some cost information. What's the office visit going to cost? If they have to draw blood, what are the, your, your lab options and what's that going to cost you? imaging, outpatient surgery. Let's give you the cost information around that. Uh, and then we assist on the prescription side as well. I'll talk about that in a couple of slides. And then lastly, if you go in for service, almost what inevitably happens, you get this bill or this EOB in the mail. And you're like, well, is that right? Do I really owe that extra $750? And so the Compass Health Post, they'll actually review your problem bills on your behalf. And if we find an error, we'll actually uh, work to resolve it. And so really a lot of the growth in Compass has been in the growth of consumer-directed health plans and high-deductible health plans where employers want to make their employees better healthcare consumers and understand their plans better, but they need some sort of tool or resource, and that's when they say, okay, now we're going to bring in HBG and Compass as that, as that tool or that guide. Um, We'll give people back their information either by phone or by email. This is just an example of the, of the email that they'll get back. I, it got cut off at the bottom, but we'll even schedule the appointment for them. Or if they're going for a second opinion, we can move doctor's uh, records from Dr. A to Dr. B. Or if they're moving, uh, we can assist them with that as well. On the prescription side, I'm glad Tom mentioned uh, pharmacy. This is where members will send us in their list of medications. So Crestor for high cholesterol, Effexor XR for depression and anxiety. And we'll go through and we'll say, okay, well, are there any direct generics or are there any therapeutic alternatives to Crestor? They, they actually did just come out with a generic Crestor. It's called Resuvastatin, but it's actually still very expensive. But, you know, Lipitor is generic now. It's a Torvastatin. And we can go through and we can say, okay, are any of these generics appropriate for you? And the Compass Health Pro will even get a HIPAA authorization and will talk to the referring doctor's office or the prescribing doctor's office on the member's behalf. Because at, at the end of the day, a lot of these names are just hard to pronounce. So we had one, one, we had one member who said, hey, are there any alternatives to omeprazole? We're like, what in the world is omeprazole? And I was like, oh, it's omeprazole, which is generic Prilosec, right? Or people, they just feel intimidated talking to their physician. They just don't have time. So it's very helpful to point out these therapeutic alternatives. Now, you actually do need a new script for that. 
So we would have the physician call in a new prescription um, to their pharmacy program, and we found, to Tom's point, that a lot more employers are putting in, pl uh, in place various levers with their specialty pharmacy, whether it's mandatory mail order for chronic medications, whether it's uh, step therapy uh, before using a specialty medication, and a lot of times the employees get lost in those programs, and so that's where the Compass Health Pro can kind of hold their hand uh, through that program and, and jump through the hoops that are required. Uh, this is just a breakdown of the types of services we perform, so doctor re recommendations are the most common. And we cast this broad net of administrative support because we know that 61% of the time, if we help you in some administrative way, you're going to come back and we're going to assist you in some sort of cost-impacting way uh, down the road. I'll do a couple of, of quick member stories and then, and then I'll stop. So. Um, this, uh, this was for a member at a, a company called Atos, which does uh, IT outsourcing like the help desk. They actually purchased the entire um, help desk division from Xerox, so they more than doubled the size of their company. They're about 6,000 employees now. They had a woman who unfortunately had breast cancer. She'd already had her surgery. She was getting her chemotherapy. And what happened? She got billed for the hospital for $7,800 for one of her chemo treatments. But why in the world did that happen? Because when they submitted the claim to the insurance carrier, <laughs> they denied it. Member calls up Compass. Turns out the carrier had denied it because the hospital hadn't gotten preauthorization for that particular chemotherapy uh, infusion. Uh, chemotherapy infusion. Ha of course, we contact the hospital. They said, well, of course we submitted the preauthorization, right? So that happens all the time, right? The left hand's not talking to the right hand. So Compass goes back, has the hospital resubmit the prior authorization, has the claim reprocessed, and oh, by the way, before we did all that, what did we do? We put the claim on hold and made sure it didn't go to collections, right? Because very quickly it goes out to collection. And a lot of times, the first time somebody finds out about a bill is when an angry bill collector calls them. And they're like, I had no idea I was 90 days past due with this. Um, and so there's an example of this woman, uh, this woman was getting billed inappropriately and we had it run appropriately through the plan. Uh, next example, so Atmos Energy, that large um, uh, utility company, we had one member who used us 74 times in four years. It was sort of your classic example. Working mom, got pregnant, had a little bit of a challenge, challenging pregnancy and delivery, so we were helping her with all the sort of the, uh, prenatal natal testing and extra ultrasounds that she needed to get, has the baby, Baby has some trouble, has to uh, have several different pediatricians and specialists, an allergist, a pediatric gastroenterologist. And then as the baby gets older, about two years old, what happens? The mom starts having lots of back pain, right? Because the two-year-olds are getting kind of heavy. You got to lift them up. They don't really walk around a whole bunch, you know, just yet. And so she had, we, we found her a PM&R doc that gave her a steroid injection in her spine, right? If she had gone to an orthospine physician, what would have happened? Spine surgery. The kid just needed to get a little older so he could walk around some more, right? And she was able to, to, to tie that over with a steroid shot. And so she and her, and her son are doing great now. But that's just an example. And again, working mom, sleep deprived. Um, not, this is not her area of expertise is dealing with all these bills. Um, so that was a, a fantastic opportunity to work with her. And then lastly, this is a, a Barry Waymiller. It's, it's based in St. Louis, but they have a whole bunch of folks in Green Bay and in South Carolina. They make uh, the machines that do printing on labels. Um, her company said, hey, you gotta go in and get an annual physical. We're not just gonna do on-site biometrics, we're not just gonna do health risk assessment, you gotta go in and you gotta get a physical. And all their employees use Compass to find the primary care physician. And that's important, right, because you actually do the physical exam, it's not just the lab numbers. And what did they find? She had a lump in her neck. And what did it turn out to be? They did an ultrasound, it was thyroid cancer. And she went back to her HR department and she said, if our company did not have this program, I would have never gone in to get an annual physical. Thank you so much. And they used that as a testimonial across the country. So like Wally said, um, Naturally Slim uh, is a great program for keeping people out of the healthcare system to keep them from developing a claim. But when they do develop a claim, let's all do everything that we can to help employees uh, and their families. From an engagement standpoint, I'll just wrap up here. We do monthly hints out to all the employees about how to be better healthcare consumers and how Compass can help them do that. We have a member portal and then of course, because we all have digitally mediated lives, we have an app that's coming out in 2017 as well. So here's Kirk Rosine for Second MD. Appreciate it, thanks. Uh, and I'm obviously the new kid on the block. And last year about this time, I left Aetna, where I was the head of client strategy and innovation for Aetna's North American business. And I, I left to go to this small rowboat called Second MD that had just gone through this whole NBGH process 
where it was Shark Tank-like um, evaluation process, we ended up being named the Innovator of the Year in 2015. And it really put us on the national map. And our, the, what drew me to Second MD initially was their, the value proposition. The best doctors in the world available by video within three days. There's a lot to that statement. And that's what initially drew me into the conversation. But it wasn't until I met this gentleman, who's our founder, Clint Phillips, um, and, and understood his story on how he created Second MD and why he did it, that I really got hooked. So Clint, born and raised in South Africa, uh, had a spine clinic helping people avoid back surgery in Aspen, Colorado. Uh, he and his family um, settled down there. When his daughter Gabby was born, shortly after she was born, she had a stroke. And so Clint didn't even know that infants could have, have strokes. His daughter was paralyzed on her right-hand side, unable to move her face. He drove four hours to the nearest pediatric neurologist in Denver who said, sorry, Clint, your daughter will never walk or talk. And so you can imagine the anguish in a dad just wanting to get care for his daughter and saying, I don't know if that person knew what they were talking about or if I'm resigned to my fate of caring for my daughter the rest of my life. Either way, I've got to make sure that what I heard was correct. So he scheduled an appointment with the head pediatric neurologist at Texas Children's. He waited four months, filled out a ton of paperwork. Two, months, two minutes into that particular office visit, that pediatric neurologist said, sorry, Clint, I don't handle stroke. But I know somebody that does. It was another three-month waiting list. This went on for a year. Clint walked away from that knowing his calling, said, listen, no one in this country, no one in the world should ever have to wait travel or fill out a ton of paperwork in order to speak to the best expert in whatever condition they are faced with. And so that's the premise of Second MD. That's, that's the backstory. And I've been in healthcare for 20, 20 years, spent 15 of that in consulting, spent my time at Aetna. There were a couple numbers when I started talking to Second MD that you know, I had never heard before. The first is in the upper left-hand corner, that's 17 years. That's the average number of years that the, the typical physician is behind on medical research. So those things that were stamped as the gold standard treatment for certain conditions 17 years ago are just finally making their way into the medical community today. That's shocking. The other one, I think we've all experienced. We all get eight to nine minutes with a physician, right? Only one of that <coughs> is spent talking about treatment and treatment options. And if you get a bombshell of a diagnosis, that one minute just simply is not going to cut it. And there's some other things that are going on within the system, right? And there's some things that, you know, we didn't talk about on the carrier side because it was tough. There's a lot of misdiagnosis going on. And there isn't a lot of data behind it. Uh, there are a few studies. The one on the left is uh, actually from Johns Hopkins. They, they did autopsies of individuals who passed away in the ICU. 28% of those individuals had at least one misdiagnosis. Our, our data suggests it's higher than that. The other uh, kind of sy systematic thing that's going on, I think we've talked about a little bit today, is that there's so much variation in treatment plan. If you go see a, an orthopedic surgeon about your back, chances are you're going to get cut, right? And what we've seen, and, and I'll share our data in a second, is that a lot of, a lot of the, the musculoskeletal type conditions, a lot of those um, decisions are really just, there's a range of treatment options that an individual can, can consider. So as we look at our business model, we're primed to reduce the unnecessary services that are out there and help correct the misdiagnoses that are being made in some critical, critical areas. So where we fit in, and this is, this is some of our new positioning that we've taken to Fortune 100 customers, is that there's a very valuable role of insurance, and that is to provide financial protection for the people that it covers, right? But where does the getting to the best expert, getting the right answer, where does that come into play? And that really comes through with a suite of assurance offerings. So Compass, I would put Compass as a service in that assurance offering. Second MD as an assurance offering. And it's only when those two come together is that member connected with the best outcomes for that specific individual. So our service 
if you think of MD Live for, for fevers and sniffles and earaches, we're everything else. So we are the specialty go-to um, service. And there, there are essentially four uh, situations that an individual may come to us where we're most able to help them. First, if they have a new diagnosis and they just want to talk to somebody, they want to get education around that diagnosis. Secondly, if they're told they need to have surgery, they can come to us and get a second opinion on whether or not that is in their best interest. Third, if they had to have a change in medication. We've talked about specialty pharma today. There's going to be a lot more coming out, not, a lot more new drugs coming out over the next couple of years. You know, how, how do you know that it isn't just a marketing push that your doctor's prescribing a, a change in medication? Our experts can help work, work with the member to understand exactly what that means. And then chronic conditions. You know, if somebody's following their disease management protocol, if somebody's working with their chronic condition, but their, their situation continues to get worse, there may be a di misdiagnosis. There may be something else going on. And our experts, and I'll talk about what their, qual their qualifications are, they're able to, to see through the noise. They're able to use data to say, hey, listen, I know that your original doctor said this, but I really think there's something else going on. And so that's really where, from a chronic condition standpoint, we can help folks that have kind of gone through the, the typical processes. On the right, you see m the most prevalent conditions that individuals are coming uh, to see us about. And that's cancer, musculoskeletal, female reproductive, uh, neurological conditions, very rare pediatric genetic disorders. There hasn't been one condition that's been presented to Second MD over the past five years that we have not been able to match an authoritative expert to. And that's, that's a bold statement. We've had some very rare conditions that have been presented to us. And in one instance, we were able to match that particular family and their, their child with a rare pediatric genetic disorder with the exact specialist who discovered that condition and was one of two that helped treat it in the entire world. So we have scoured uh, the, the, the specialty community, and we know who these folks are. But we're not the first in the game with second opinions. And, and I, will, I will challenge everybody in this room to think of us as expert decision support versus second opinions. Because second opinions have been around for 25 years. The challenge is nobody has used it. It's been a very long paper-oriented process that's been set up around the, the convenience of the provider, right? And so if, if I'm somebody who's going to use one of the traditional second opinion services, I'm going to talk to somebody and then wait around four to six weeks in order to get a 30-page written report. I don't ever get to speak to the specialist. Second MD flips that on its head. There's direct interaction between the member and the specialist. The specialist gets asked the member questions about their condition, get additional data, uh, which results in a higher degree of clinical precision. The member can ask the, the specialist any questions they have about their condition. And so that is a truly unique opportunity to get personal feedback, to run the conversation through a personal value system of that member so that they can come to a, a conclusion of what's best for them. And it's not just a, getting a written report back. And what we've seen on, on those uh, circumstances where we've taken over clients uh, from some of the traditional is that we are generating between five and up to 20 times the utilization. And we're not a week-long process. We turn these consults around in about three days. So it fits very well within the consumer's decision flow which is very important when you think of somebody who has an oncology diagnosis. They're not going to want to wait four to six weeks to start treatment. They want to they be reassured that they're speaking to someone who knows more about that condition than anyone else in the world, and they can do that within the next couple of days, and then they can start their treatment plan. So it's an incredibly powerful benefit that, that employers are rolling out. And similar to the, the evolution of consumerism, we are the next iteration because we are supporting members in their decisions in real time. So there, there's an element of the, the price transparency tools. There's an element of the, the health advocacy and, and navigation services like Compass provides. But when things ver get very challenging from a clinical perspective, we can be that next step. We can be that support mechanism that can help those individuals with the, the complex diagnoses. 
So our experts, we have over 400 specialists that we have signed exclusive deals with. We formed our panel um, to, to encompass every single one of the 120 recognized subspecialties. And we started with the institutions you see here. And we looked at leaders within those institutions. We looked at the individuals that um, folks were traveling around the world to physically go see. And we said, hey, we're, we're coming up with a video platform that's gonna enable you to expand your reach and do so in a very convenient way. Would you be interested in participating with us? And resounding, the, the answer was yes. And so we've contracted, as I said, with, with over 400 specialists on this platform. And we, we also ensure that these individuals are conversant in the latest evidence-based guidelines. They have to have led at least 20 clinical trials or have been published on peer-reviewed studies at least 20 times. So they can, they can re refer back to the clinical literature off the top of their head because and many times they've led those processes. And so the question I always get is, all right, so why would these individuals want to participate with you? And so I'll, I'll, I'll let one of the doctors speak for uh, the rest of the, of the staff. I've been working with Second MD for several years. It uh, has provided me the opportunity to extend my ability to deliver second opinions. I think more importantly, however, uh, it has offered a vector for patients who really may not have the kind of access that they would like to have uh, to uh, qualified physicians. So the, the platform has been really efficient for me. I can tell you I'm extremely busy, so I need to have uh, a system in place that is very streamlined. Uh, going to the website, getting access to the history, uh, previous physician notes, objective testing such as x-rays and MRIs, operative notes and so forth has made it really, really easy for me to quickly get the information I need to then interact almost face to face uh, but virtually with the patient. Um, I think it advantages both parties uh, to the extent that it, uh, it offers the patient a uh, cost-effective, efficient way to get access to a very specific uh, specialist, and it offers me to reach out to, frankly, more people uh, at a time that may be more convenient uh, given the time constraints that I have as a surgeon. So, frankly, it's a model that I haven't seen anywhere else. Um, it's been a win-win for everyone, and um, I congratulate them for their success. And, frankly, the experience I've had with patients has been incredibly gratifying. Uh, while I don't meet them face-to-face, -face, I uh, we do get feedback after these interactions have happened, and um, I'm, uh, you know, uh, very uh, comforted by the fact that the patients find this to be a satisfying experience, uh, even without physically laying my hands on them, but being able to uh, use all the data to come up with a, a logical uh, treatment plan that they can then uh, test uh, locally, given their second opinion. So thank you for allowing me to participate, and I wish you great success in the future. So, so essentially, that is the uh, team physician for the Chicago Bulls. And he said, listen, Second MD makes it incredibly easy for me. I, I have everything in a cloud-based environment. I open up my laptop. I'm able to see all the medical records. I'm able to have a virtual face-to-face -face conversation with, with the member and then type up some notes and I'm done. It helps me expand my reach. And for many of these specialists, that's the biggest motivator. It's not the money. It's the fact that they can help people in their wheelhouse. And what we do a very good job at is matching our members with those exact individuals that, that can help them. And so what we've essentially done is that we have expanded the scope of world-class care. It's now available absolutely anywhere from where that member is. So the individual can speak with a world-class specialist from the comfort of their home, surrounded by their family. They no longer need to wait, travel, sit in a bunch of waiting rooms, fill out a ton of paperwork. It's incredibly simple. We provide three basic services, and, and the, the showcase one is the, the, the video consultation with these expert specialists. So these are 20 to 30 minute direct conversations with experts. Um, there's, there's no standard script, there's nothing, it's just an opportunity to have a conversation, get recommendations, get input, that sort of thing. We can also support a text a specialist functionality. So if there's something on a less acuity basis, so let's say I start a new medication, I'm having a side effect, um, I'm just wondering if that's normal. I can text a specialist within 24 hours, I get a response, yep, that's normal, it's, and you know, if it continues, you may want to monitor it, talk to your physician. So within 24 hours, you get a response, it's going to avoid some office visits. 
We can also support, similar to Compass, finding local specialists that are, that are recognized for high quality. So we've built an algorithm that looks across 26 different data sets that can identify high performing physicians in the local network. And we will call and we will make appointments, we will verify insurance, we will do the concierge type of, of offering beyond that consult. So very hands-on, we have a, a, a team of nurses that, that answers the phone uh, when you call Second MD. Uh, so we, we are very clinically focused, but we're all, we're, we're here to simplify healthcare, including the next steps. So we'll, we'll make appointments. We'll do a lot of the concierge types of offerings after the consult. So let's, let's talk about results, because I, I know that, that we wouldn't be here if this was just a great service and great access. Um, we are able to impact quality of care and reduce unnecessary services, potentially more so than any other benefit available in the employer healthcare space. From a quality of care perspective, 34% of our consults result in a corrected diagnosis. So think back to that study in the Johns Hopkins ICU, they're at 28%, we're at 34%. 73% of the treatment plans are improved. So if you think about that, only 27% of the population is seeing the right doctor, getting the right advice, and is, is going down the right treatment path. Everything else is waste. And so we are, we are able to address that waste through a simple conversation. And then we can support steerage. So if there are, are center of excellence types of, of programs that that employer has put in place, if there are other performance network considerations, we can steer into those and we can be an active part of that type of conversation. Where it really gets fun is around the decision making process of the consumer. So out of all the consults that we, we do where the next step would be surgery, 34% of those members voluntarily cancel their surgery as a result of the conversation with a second MD expert. 34%. Those are 34% of the surgeries just fall off the table because the member better understands their diagnosis and the full spectrum of treatment options. That's powerful stuff. That's consumerism 3.0 right there. And what we've seen is that in certain circumstances, it's, it's more uh, more prevalent, so lower back surgery. What we're seeing is 52 out of 100 people that are coming to us saying, hey, you know, I've been recommended to have lower back surgery. 52 out of 100 are saying, you know what, that's not the right thing for me. So the average savings per consult on a lower back consult is close to $20,000. So it's incredible the amount of variability that's out there that a little education, a little time, an, an additional step in the process can help ferret out a lot of that waste. Sure. So alternative diagnosis being suggested. Um, as, as we look across our book, there are a lot of people that are being bounced around the surgical circuit. So they're seeing five or six different specialists and, and they don't get a firm diagnosis. We can help with that. As long as there's been data from some sort of primary care test and we were able to retrieve those clinical notes, we are able to, to, to narrow the focus of, of what that individual is looking at. Many of those were able to, to suggest what the diagnosis is. Other ones where it's, it's high prevalence is on musculoskeletal. Oncology, relatively low at 12%, but if you think about oncology from a quality and a safety perspective from a member, I mean, that is huge. How much are you spending on an episodic basis for oncology services? And if 12% of those are able to be corrected out of the gate before you go down that very expensive and dangerous treatment path for something that's not correct, that can be life-saving. And so a lot of the, a lot of the very like billboard type stories that we have, and we, we have them on a weekly basis, come out of on oncology. What we've also found is that female reproductive, so hysterectomies, that sort of thing, there, there's also a high degree of, of um, misdiagnosis there as well. From an improve, improved treatment plan perspective, overall 73%. Uh, musculoskeletal, still pretty high, 71%. Oncology, again, we're, we're talking about the latest and greatest clinical research. 57% of the time, it's not optimized. 
And I'll, I'll give you an example. So there was a woman in the Northeast who had been diagnosed with, with breast cancer, uh, and it had also spread to her lungs. And she was seeing a, an oncologist at MassGen, a very reputable Harvard-affiliated hospital, who said, listen, I'm going to start you on a very form, aggressive form of chemo treat, chemotherapy, and we are going to have a double mastectomy. And I think if we do that, we can buy you 12 months to live. So she actually, through her self-retirement party, went to go manage her, her cancer. And it was, it, as you can imagine, it was a very sorrowful time for her. She reached out to Second MD. We were able to link her with Dr. Craig Henderson, who is the world's foremost expert in breast cancer. He said, Karen, listen. The, it, it's not, it's not the, the breast cancer I'm concerned about, it's the lesions in your lung. Let's try chemo, chemotherapy first. I don't think the mastectomy is going to do anything but delay the time in which you could start chemo. And so he, he prescribed, a, a, he recommended a, a lower uh, intensity chemotherapy that's a lot more uh, pertinent for her lungs. And within four months, Karen was back to work. It's been two years, Karen is cancer free. But if she would have proceeded down that path with her local oncologist that he recommended, chances are she probably would have passed away by now. So it really is that authoritative guidance that, that we're able to bring to the table and the reassurance that's just so incredibly powerful. Um, so we've been around for five years. Initially, the first couple, we were direct to consumer. And we built it and nobody came. And so we pivoted after we saw the number of surgeries that were being canceled. And we said, all right, let's, let's follow the money. So we started going direct to employers. And that, that worked for a couple years. We got some uh, pretty large customers, so Waste Management, Morgan Stanley, um, Starbucks, uh, and, and some others. And we've just continued to, to grow since then. So it's, it's been a, a very interesting evolution of an organization. And you know, the, the way it works is, is very simple. And Clint built this to be the antithesis of what he went through over the course of that year. A member simply needs to raise their hand. They can contact us by phone, email, they can go to our online portal, they can use our mobile app, and just let us know a little bit about what's going on. We will assign a personal nurse that will hold their hand throughout the entire process. That nurse will be assigned to that member, they establish some incredible relationships. We will take care of collecting records. 2015, our average turnaround time for records was 1.8 days. Our competitors are looking at two to three weeks. So the speed for us, what's the point of having the most incredible doctors available within a couple days if we can't get the medical records? So we collect them, we digitize them, we upload them. Um, we recommend specialists. So again, back to the matching criteria, we're very good at that. Um, we'll let the member choose which particular specialist they want to talk to. We'll give them a choice of a couple. And typically they say, hey, you know, they're both amazing doctors. It doesn't really matter. Just let me know when they're available. Um, we schedule the consult around the member's availability. So 62% of our consults are happening on nights and weekends where it's more convenient for the member and it's more convenient for, for the specialist. Our care team also reviews the written summaries. So after that conversation, there is a written summary of exactly what was discussed. Any research that was, that was mentioned is, is documented. Um, and so we do do a, a little bit of an audit just to make sure that it's written at a level people understand, it's timely, it's relevant for that member. And then we'll coordinate any follow-up needs. So this is where we'll help find local and network um, specialists locally to, to help execute the treatment plan. <coughs> Um, and we can also transmit all the medical records we've retrieved. We'll give copies of the, of the written summary of the consultation. So it really is a, a very, very warm concierge type of benefit after that, that consult. Um, we'll stay with that member for the next couple months just to make sure if they have any questions or they need any additional support, we're there. So it's not a one and done. We won't kick you out. Um, you always have the number of your care team nurse. And it's, it's great to be able to pick up the phone if, if you're not sure what to do next. If, if you put yourself in, in the shoes of somebody who's, who's going through something really challenging, and you're able to pick up the phone, get reassurance, speak to somebody who knows more than anything, anybody else in the world about that particular condition, you can imagine it's a pretty satisfying experience, right? So we measure satisfaction on every single case that we do. Uh, you'll see that the doctor's expertise, their screen side manner, 
you know, 4.9 out of 5. Uh, our customer care, which is our nurse team, incredibly warm, incredibly passionate, and that comes through in our, our satisfaction scores as well. But the one that, that you know, we, we can hold up a number one finger for is that we have the highest net promoter score in the entire healthcare industry. So that question in order to get that score is, would you recommend second MD to a family member or a loved one? And so we have nine and a half people out of 10 saying, oh yeah, absolutely. It was, it was the easiest healthcare experience we've ever had. So our net promoter score, even though we've scaled pretty significantly over the past couple of years, continues to tick up. We're at 85.42 which is absolutely incredible. It beats Costco, it beats USAA. I came from Aetna, we were a negative six, so I've significantly <laughs> improved my lot in life. And, and we've, we, we serve everybody from the truck drivers at, at Waste Management to the investment bankers at Morgan Stanley. You got the baristas at, at Starbucks, we've got the retirees at Texas A&M that go in there and just hang out for the rest of the day. So we, we can cover every single demographic, the, the communication angles would be different, uh, but w what we found is that the most authentic and, and engagement driving communication tactics we can, we can drive are really those stories of the folks that we've been able to help. And so we look to capture those. We look to work with those employer clients to say, hey, you know, Joe, right down the hall, we helped his family. This is how we did it. And usually Joe becomes the biggest second MD champion in the entire environment. So we started last year and we won the Health Innovations Forum. This year we've launched our mobile app, what we call a three-day gateway, which is where we're tying ourselves to the pre-cert or prior auth process. Um, we're pleased to announce that we have, um, we have a new partnership with MD Anderson, uh, which will allow us to uh, further accelerate our oncology capabilities, getting access to the research, their oncologists, they will be performing all path slide reviews for us. So we're really going world class because we've seen just the incredible impact we've been able to have there. And as we, as we look forward, you know, we're looking for similar types of partnerships. Um, we're looking at ways we can deploy artificial intelligence to, to use all the data that we're collecting. We're looking at genetic testing, molecular oncology, and some very advanced ways that we can help support folks in getting the right care at the right time. 